Hey guys, Paul Monroe here. And today we're going to talk about a subject that is very much overlooked and that is seat height. We're not going to do any playing today, but what I'm going to show you and what I'm going to educate you on could change the game for you as far as your drumming goes. So if you want to take your drumming to the next level, and you need to stick around to the end of this very short video because this will be a game changer for you. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, guys, welcome back. Well, got to check my fly. All right, fly is good. Woo, I'm a little sweaty right now, so I apologize. The end of my practice today, it's uh, 10 p.m. Time to go home and hang out with my doggies and the wife and the daughter and the family and all that good stuff. But uh, a little sweaty. I got a couple gigs coming up, some shows uh, Friday and Saturday. Tomorrow's Friday. The next day would be Saturday. And uh, two in a row. So just trying to warm up and get ready for those shows. But let's talk about uh, something really important. And it is definitely overlooked. I'm going to turn off the fan here. Yeah. The fan was a little too loud. Always have your water, man. That is so important. Got to keep hydrated. Right on, right on. It's okay if you drip some on the shirt. It's all right. It's all good. But let's talk about seat height. Because... This is a real game changer. And I unfortunately, at one point in my drumming career, stopped playing for a long time. Not 100%, but for the most part, I really stopped playing. I mean, I've been playing the drums since I was five years old, so kind of got burnt out after a while, and then I really missed it, and then I came back. When I came back, I didn't remember, I didn't even think about my seat height. So I was experimenting with different things and it was a subject that really bugged me because I couldn't quite figure it out and I was having trouble doing double bass stuff at the time. And I was really struggling with balance, I was struggling with power, and I was struggling with control. And I couldn't figure out what is going on. Now, what I'm gonna tell you, what I'm gonna educate you on may not be the same for everybody, okay? Because there's three different seat heights. You can sit really low, you can sit like just level, or you can sit really high. Now what works for me may not work for you, and what works for you may not work for me. I tried a couple of different things and I found out what works for me. So I'm just gonna show you what I've learned and educate you on this, and then you can decide for yourself if you're struggling with the same things, maybe you don't have any power in your bass drum. Maybe you have no control or you don't feel like you have enough control and you really would like to get that balance, that control and that power back. This is where you need to start to make sure that your seat is the right height. Let's talk about a few different drummers right now. So if you're going to sit really low, which means that your knees will be above your hips, okay? Your knees will be above your hips. I'm thinking of a drummer off the top of my head, Tommy Aldridge. Good rock drummer, played with a lot of different bands. I'll show you a picture right here. Tommy Aldridge. So you can see by this picture that his knees are way above his hip and his legs work like little pistons, right? He's a great drummer. Great double bass technique, great control, great power. Now, I have trouble sitting down that low, okay? But some drummers do. Here's another great drummer, Scott Travis from Judas Priest. Here's a picture of Scott. So you could, you could tell here, he really sits low. He's a tall guy too, so his legs are really, really long. Now, when you sit low like this, your knees are above your hips, and you're gonna feel a lot of pressure in the tops of your legs, okay? The tops of your legs over here. You're gonna be using these muscles a lot, right? And you're also gonna be using your hip flexors. 
a lot. Those muscles are going to be engaged. The quadriceps, they're really going to be engaged to use this technique. Now, if you get used to it and it feels good, then, you know, you can play great. Scott Travis is an amazing, amazing double bass drummer. Listen to a song called Painkiller, and he does some really crazy double bass stuff in there very fast and with a lot of control and a lot of power. So I'm not saying any technique is right or wrong. You got to find out what works for you. Now there's drummers that sit a little higher. Some, some drummers sit really high. Uh, there's a guy that's uh, on online, a really good drummer, the Orlando drummer. Um, don't quite have a picture of him, but he sits really high with his hips above his knees, okay? The hips way above the knees. So it's almost like, like he's standing, okay? And I just cannot do this, all right? I've seen a bunch of really great drummers play like this where they sit really, really high the hips above the knees and I just feel that I just don't have control when I'm when I'm playing at that height um, you don't have to sit so much you know as high as that you can kind of you know adjust your seat and kind of work with that and still have the hips above the knees uh, now Thomas Lang is another great drummer I love Thomas he's actually a really good friend of mine and I work for Thomas I do a lot of uh, stuff for him on his website, things like that. And I go to his studio, visit him all the time. And we talk about this stuff. And he likes this type of an angle like that, okay? Where the hip is here, the knees are here. So he likes having that angle. And when I sit on his kit, for some reason, I cannot play double bass. I cannot, I don't have the control. When I sit on his kit, I just don't have the control that I would like to with double bass. Even if I was to do like, uh, you know, sevens, dick it, dick it, da, dick it, dick it, da, it's more like, you know, it just, I, all, my my strokes seem to blend together instead of real evenly, dick it, dick it, da, okay? So Thomas doesn't sit really, really high, but he does have his hips above his knees. Now, I like to kind of sit almost flat, where my hips are level with my knees, but not quite so much. I'm gonna put my hips just a little higher than my knees, and when I'm playing, when I'm raising my knees and actually playing, my knees are going above my hips. So I'm gonna show you that angle right now. I'm gonna move the camera around so you can kind of see how I'm sitting and you can see what I'm talking about. So let's do that. All right, so I'm hoping this will be a good angle for you. Now you can see, this is the way I sit right here. Now I used to sit a little higher like this, where my hips are way above my knees, but I had no control whatsoever and very little power. Now when I sit really low with my hips lower than my knees, then I feel too much pressure in my quadriceps and in my hip flexors here. I feel a lot of pain and I want to be able to play with ease without too much pain and without too much effort. So this is where I'm sitting, just like this, with a very small angle from my hip to my knee. So you could take you know, your stick, here's parallel, and you could see like that. Now I would recommend you videotape yourself and kind of see on an angle from a side view of how you're sitting so you can compare and you could you might say to yourself, oh man, I didn't realize I was sitting that low or that high or that's just right or I, I could relate to what Paul's saying, I have no power in my stroke so I'm gonna play with this, all right? So now you can see where I'm at and as I'm playing, if I'm playing double bass, sometimes my knees come up a little higher than my hips and that's okay because I found this sweet spot for myself. This is where I like to sit. I'm gonna bring the camera back to the other place, the other angle. All right, so there we go. I told you this is gonna be a very short video, but I'm telling you, this may seem like no big deal. Oh man, I wish Paul would have done a lesson where he would have played and blah, 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 and maybe another cover tune where you could see him play. You know, if you join my channel for that reason, I apologize, but 
I did feel that this was a very, very important lesson and it changed my plane completely. When I went from a high seat to a low seat, all of a sudden everything came back to me, okay? All my power and control and it was a game changer and now I could play with a lot more confidence. So hopefully what I've educated you on today will help you with your playing. Please comment below and let me know where your seat is. Do you sit high? Do you sit low? Do you kind of sit right in the middle? And if this tip helped you at all. All right. I appreciate you guys. Please like the video if you like the content that I'm giving you. Comment. Let me know what you'd like to see or what you would like to learn. I'm going to be putting out some more um, cover tunes in the future. And the reason why last week I didn't do a video, and maybe I'm doing videos every other week now, is because I'm just playing a lot now. I'm playing out live with, you know, like three different bands. And uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow and Saturday, I'll be playing with a Judas Priest tribute band. So um, that's why I've just been really busy. I'm trying to squeeze these videos in. But I always appreciate you guys coming to check it out. And if you like the video, hit that like. Just takes a second, just hit it. And that helps the channel grow so that YouTube will share it out to more people and we can continue doing this, all right? I appreciate you guys. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Hit the little bell next to subscribe so that you can be notified of all the new videos I put out in the future. I'll see you on the next one.